But let's talk about mortgage accessibility. There's only a few major banks in the Philippines that offer housing loans. First, banks are very wary of lending because of the titling and registration problems. On top of that, there's lengthy delays in the foreclosure process due to the weak court systems. Even the ones who can qualify for bank financing, when compared to other countries, the terms aren't very favorable. In 2024, the interest rates range from anywhere from 6.15% to 10.5% with high penalties and fees. So most properties in the Philippines are sold in cash or pre-sold by developers who are offering their own financing. Although typically I prefer not to purchase properties with cash and I prefer to buy properties with a mortgage, but because of the low price points in the Philippines, I might be okay in some cases buying properties in cash. This factor is going to greatly contribute to the liquidity of the market. That means less capable buyers, less transactions, and longer sales cycles. Let's talk about titles. The Philippines has a very complex legal structure around land and property ownership. So a lot of land, especially in rural areas, lack proper registration. I've seen a lot of people, especially in Shurgao, try to sell me land based on a tax declaration. That basically means I have to pay the seller a large sum of money just to have the rights to pay the property tax. So a lot of the brokers and agents out there will tell you that it's completely safe. So you need to know that this doesn't prove legal ownership. And the lack of proper registration makes owners vulnerable to to disputes and problems down the line. At the end of the day, when it comes to real estate investment, the numbers do matter. So let's take a look at what the Philippines real estate market looks like relative to other markets in Asia. Let's start with the price to rent ratio. This is an indication of how many years it would take for you to recover your investment with rental income. The Philippines ranks number three, only behind Indonesia and Thailand. In the Philippines, it takes you approximately 19 years of rental income to pay off that property. In comparison to Taiwan, which takes 46 years and Hong Kong that takes 30 years. So relatively speaking, it looks pretty attractive. So that means that the relative rent is proportionally high to the typical price of the property. It means the Philippines will yield a higher return. So Metro Manila is ranked the second highest yielding city at 5.04%, only behind Jakarta at 7%. So in terms of affordability, Manila ranks number two with an average price per square meter at $1,317 or 74,000 pesos. When you think about the low price point, the affordability, the high rental yields, Philippines does look like an attractive investment on paper. But what's even more interesting, if you look at the outlook for the Philippines, there is some strong indication for good growth and potential upside. There's a large growing population of over 100 million people. It's a very young demographic as well with an average age of 25. Plus, the Philippines economy has been growing by an average of 6% per year. And that's quite high. That's actually one of the highest. These are all very strong indication that there's a lot of room for growth in the real estate market. That could be very exciting for you as a long-term investor. As an opportunistic investor, I'm not looking for the perfect property or the perfect market because everything's too expensive at that point. I'm looking for great opportunities with lower price points and good upside. Let's talk about the Philippines infrastructure. We know that infrastructure development has a big impact on the value of real estate. It enhances accessibility, drives value appreciation, improves the quality of life, and stimulates the economy. Better infrastructure will just attract more businesses, tourists, and ultimately more investors. But the thing is, the Philippines is considered to have one of the worst infrastructure development in all of Asia, only beating out Myanmar and Cambodia. And even countries like Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam have surpassed the Philippines in the recent decades in infrastructure development. And we know that traffic has a big role to play in the quality of life and the efficiency of an economy. So Metro Manila is ranked the number one worst city in the world, according to TomTom's traffic index. But here's the bright side. Things could change in the future. When President Duterte was in power, he initiated his Build, Build, Build infrastructure program. But new President Bongbong Marcos is pledging to up the infrastructure spend to now 5-6% to 6 of the country's GDP and inviting businesses to participate. But Marcos emphasizes the railway system, in particular subways that stretch across Metro Manila, Davao, and Cebu. And it's going to be in partnership with the Japanese. If this happens, this could significantly change the landscape of the Philippines infrastructure development. And this could really boost real estate investments. That means there could be some significant upside around the corner. And this could be a very good time to get in. So listen guys, I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed to our channel. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button and share this with a friend who's thinking about their next investment 
investment. This really encourages us to put in the time and attention and the research to put together these quality videos for you. So stay tuned for my next video.